I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I have an antique cell phone. And I apologize for the traffic. I might leave this white dog if it keeps staying, um, you know, staying noisy. Um, but yeah, so I'm probably gonna have to do these in a series because you're limiting us to five minutes. And I tend to talk in tangents and curves. And I have found a lot of information about my family, but I still have a lot of information left. Um, but yeah, but I wanted to start with Chicago and Mississippi because most of us, very many of us, that's my baby. <laughs> um, I like to call myself a granddaughter of Mississippi River Delta. My father's family's from Greenville. Um, my mother's family, my mother's father's side, her, they came out um, near the Alabama border from Sugarlock. Um, but yeah, I, we know that many people copper colored in Chicago had people come up from Mississippi and I'm one of them. Um, which brings me to Mississippi. I know you did mention you were gonna get into Mississippi, especially the river. And during my research, because I look up states when states came into the union, when they were seated. Um, so, I wanted to dig into the question, Mississippi, the Great River, is an Ojibwe, better known as Chippewa name. Many of the people in Mississippi and Alabama are Choctaw. So you've got this river that's sourced in Minnesota where the Ojibwe live, but you have a state which used to be a territory when Mississippi and Alabama were a territory was Mississippi territory. Um, I'm gonna have to move because my baby's crying. But, um, so how did an Ojibwe name for the river come to name an entire state and formerly a territory? Um, which brings me back to the mural I just showed you. The first non-indigenous inhabitant of Chicago was also copper colored. His mom was Haitian, dad was French. Um, those who are knowledgeable know that is Jean Baptiste Pointe du Sable. Um, a lot of black and white people, quote unquote, black and white people in Chicago do not know that the first non-indigenous inhabitant of this city looked like us. Um, so yeah, so my second question, follow up to the Mississippi River. We know he came up the Mississippi River from New Orleans. He knew to turn east at the Illinois River, was currently known as the Illinois River, and made his way to what's currently known as Lake Michigan. How would he know that? Like, how do you know to just turn? Why didn't he turn at the Ohio River? He turned at the Illinois River and found this here. So my suspicion, my theory, the Ojibwe and the Choctaw, this is my theory, that they had maybe like a trade route. Um, because why would the Choctaw also agree to the Great River being named an Ojibwe name? Unless there's some history there that we don't know about. Um, so yeah, those were my... That's just what I wanted to get at. Um, Mississippi, Chicago. Oh, okay, so this is gonna go longer than five minutes and I do apologize. Hopefully you'll take six. There is a Chicago historian. He is white, but he's knowledgeable. And, you know, he they show his stuff on PBS here, the Chicago PBS channel, channel 11 for people who are from Chicago. His name's Jeffrey Bear. And one of his specials was on the Colombian, the World Colombian Exposition, which then was celebrating, quote unquote, celebrating Columbus's, quote unquote, discovery of America. It's like the 400 year anniversary. And there was a photo, and if they re-aired it, they were probably edited out. But there was a photo, I think it was like a parade of nations or something like that. There was a photo of men who looked like my father and feathers back then. So this is like 1893. And 
men darker than us. And one of them looked like my daddy was wearing feathers. I don't think, and I tried, I did try to, you know, try to Google up the picture and I saw every nation except those dark colored men wearing feathers. So I'll end with that. Um, if you have thoughts, I mean, you have permission to use my face, my voice, um, my first name, my questions. Um, you can use all of that. But um, I know you did mention getting back in, getting into Mississippi. I know you have a lot of work to do, but Mississippi is my bloodline. So that's why, you know, that's just what I'm pushing. I know you're like East Coast, Virginia, but there are a lot of us who are descendants of Mississippi, you know, the river and the land. And we need some love. So, <laughs> so yeah, I will end it with that. Um, yeah, I'll finish that. But like the next in my series will be my mom's side, my dad's side, because there's so much to explain on the, those two. And my kindergarten teacher. Uh, the next one, the next video I send you will probably be about my kindergarten teacher and what I think she may consciously or unconsciously or subconsciously been doing to tell us who we were. Um, so I'm gonna end it there. Happy Mother's Day to your wife. And yeah, I'm gonna end with that. I'm sorry I went like two to three minutes long, but I'm pushing the baby stroller and I'm trying to get all this in. So thanks for listening. Take care.